Since the COVID-19 pandemic began, Florida's unemployment rate jumped to as high as 14%. Now, while things have improved since early 2020, organizations like Junior Achievement of South Florida assist the next generation of talent by getting them ready for the workforce. Organization President and CEO Lori Salarulo joins us now to talk about their programs. Welcome, Lori. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being with us. Now, uh, I know you do a lot of work in career development, specifically for young people in South Florida. Tell us about your apprenticeship and your internship programs and what sets them apart from the rest. Yeah, so Junior Achievement a few years ago started to focus on the high school population. Uh, and so that is where those are kids, right? They're going to come out of school in the next four years to six years, possibly. Uh, and so we needed to get them ready for jobs. So we created J Career Bound. They spend eight months training, getting ready for jobs, going out into different industries, finding out about the different pathways. And then at the end of that, right, they've practiced interviewing, resume building, networking. Uh, they apply for jobs. We help place them into summer jobs for six weeks. Uh, they're paid by employers. And I'm thrilled to say that many of those students go on to be offered continued employment. The second piece of that was the pre-apprenticeship piece. So we started to hear that apprenticeship programs were struggling because if, let's say, 10 kids would go into the program, only two would complete it. And reason being, they didn't know that this is really not what they wanted. So we thought, let's move into the pre-apprenticeships and get them ready for those apprenticeships so that we can see better completion rates in the apprenticeship programs. And so those are two of the things we're doing to help address the workforce issue. What a gift, Lori, because honestly, I think some grown adults still uh, would benefit from kind of being able to try and have that trial and error period, you know, with that apprenticeship uh, situation. So what a, what a gift that those people, those children, those young people can, can have that opportunity through your organization. But I also know you emphasize financial literacy along with career development. And how has that been impacted or how have you been able to enforce or reinforce that message uh, during this time of COVID-19? Yeah, I think our other two pillars are financial literacy and entrepreneurship, and then they really all go together, right? Our workforce skills are so developed during our entrepreneurship program. They're developing real companies, dealing with the logistics supply chain during COVID as they built their companies. So we're really building those strong skill sets that we all want when we're hiring. The financial literacy piece is, well, if we're going to help them to earn money, how do we help them to manage and build wealth? So, you know, it, it kind of all goes together um, and it's all about employment and entrepreneurship, right? Being self-employed. Excellent. And I know the JA Fellows Program is another key to your organization. Tell us about this year's group. Uh, I, I, there's only one word I can use to describe it, and that's transformational. When you see these students at the start of the school year and they come up with their idea and they pitch it to the sharks and their coach, and then they have mentors working with them throughout the year, sourcing their products, marketing their products, selling them, uh, and then finally uh, competing in the Spark Tank finale in uh, end of April, early May, it is literally these students are transformed. Some may go on to do entrepreneurship. Some may want to open their own business and others will just walk away with the most amazing, strong skills, right? That again, as employers, we want them to have. My goodness, this is, it sounds so exciting. How, how has your program adjusted or have had to pivot during the pandemic? Well, you know, we have the largest JA facility in the world. It's over 60,000 square feet. And so what we did was look at how could we combine our mission and our curriculums and education with the needs of the community. And so one of the things we did during COVID was we turned our facility into a remote learning center for the families who couldn't afford to put their children into pods, right, learning pods, but had to go to work. We provided a safe place where they could do their e-learning during the day, and then we could deliver our curriculums in the afternoons after school. Um, so that was just one way. And I think developing this pre-apprenticeship, you know, during COVID, it gave us the chance to really take the time to envision, right, what the next uh, new initiative and, and how we could build on the work that we're already doing. 
we also used our building as a workspace, like a WeWork. And our students who were put into jobs that summer, that all of our storefronts in our building were used as offices. And so we were able to have those children and those students in the building, uh, working with them, continuing to build their work skills, assisting them when they had challenges, um, and having them work with their employers right there in our building. Oh my gosh. I want to go work there, Lori. <laughs> this is impressive. It is like the best job in the world. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Lori. Thank you so much for having me. There's so many ways to get involved. I hope people will. Come visit us. Today's newsmaker has been Lori Salarulo. I'm Natalia Ortiz. Thank you so much for joining us.